welcome to book to bestseller tv today we have amy weshley with us she is the fiction and nonfiction writer of two books we're going to talk about today she's an author a professional editor and a wilderness medicine instructor for the wilderness medicine institute she is the author of going over the falls and chasing waves a surfer's tale of obsessive wandering her stories have appeared in publications such as the seattle times the Bellingham Herald, Surfer, Sierra, and Surf Life for Women. She and her husband live in Palsbo, Washington with their two daughters. So the very first thing I must ask you is, what is a wilderness medicine instructor? <laughs> so people who go backpacking or hiking or traveling, uh, raft guides, uh, camp counselors, you know, we, we operate in places that is far enough away from hospitals and ambulances that sometimes we need to take care of our medical needs on our own. And so I work for a school that we teach, you know, just kind of average people. Um, like I mentioned, parents who are taking their kids hiking or um, you're going on a long trip, you're going to a third world country, and you just want to know how to take care of yourself if you should get hurt. And so I teach like a two day long course. A lot of times I'm partnered with REI mm, right. um, yeah. and uh, kind of get that message out to people that are just enjoying the wilderness, um, but just can't, they, they'll be too far away from a hospital to get care right away. So that's what I do sometimes. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, I'll bet it is. So do you go into, and you you know, may not, I obviously don't know anything about this, but do you go into like, okay, these are smart berries to use for like pain relief. And these are not the berries you'd want to use for pain relief. Do you go into that kind of thing too? You mean like berries that you eat? Yeah. Like this will kill you and this might make you feel a little oh. bit better. Um, well, I don't know. We don't really talk about like okay. medicinal stuff that you find in the woods. Um, I mean, a lot of it is so hard. Like some places you go, you, I've never seen some of the stuff that's growing. So I don't really know. I mean, especially like mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Boy, I mean, there's like mushrooms that look identical and one will kill you and one won't. So no, I don't, I tend not to cover that um, in our class. So it's mainly like how to uh, relocate your shoulder. Should you dislocate your shoulder? How to oh, package right. up a, a wound if you really cut yourself badly or hurt yourself really badly. How to know when someone really needs to be evacuated and, and if they do, how fast? Like, do you need a helicopter? Do you need to get out your satellite phone and you know, call for help right away? Or, you know, can you hike this person out or carry them out or call for help and have people help you hike them out? So okay. it's mainly that practical kind of stuff. Oh, that's great. That's really interesting. I bet you yeah, um, really you must enjoy that. Okay, so you, uh, one of one of your, I'm going to assume this is one of your loves, but one of your loves is surfing, correct? Yes. Okay, so I know when I surf, um, I don't do it well. <laughs> so let's start with that. But if <laughs> if something wonderful happens and all the stars align and it becomes a magical experience, I will actually get up on the board and ride a wave. So I know what that feeling is like and it's exhilarating. So tell me why you love surfing. Um, I love surfing because I love being outside. First of all, I've always been an outdoors person um, and being in the water is uh, one of the best places I think to be. Um, I feel like you're, you're in the medium where there's wildlife and it's a, uh, you know, beautiful place. Uh, it's peaceful. Um, and it's also, you know, powerful with powerful waves and, um, your ability to just be a part of a piece of nature. Um, so I like it because it's thrilling. Uh, and I love catching waves, all kinds, little waves and big waves. Uh, and I also really love the the smell and the, the sounds that the ocean makes. And uh, I love to travel. And so when I travel and surf, it's a great way to really commune with the culture in a new place. Um, you meet a lot of locals in the water. It's one of the most unique sports in that you could be surfing next to some world-class surfer um, versus, you know, you couldn't just go to a, like a basketball court and, you know, sidle up to some famous pro player. They just don't let you do that. But in surfing, you never know who you're going to see in the lineup. So that's another really fun thing is to get to meet, um, people from all over. And some, some of them are really amazing surfers. I can learn a lot by watching them. Um, so yeah, all of those things. Oh yeah, that's great. Do you have a, a most favorite surf destination? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I mean, I wrote a book about my favorites and chasing waves. Um, 
And gosh, my favorite place is probably Fiji um, because it's so spectacular. Everything about that place. The waves are beautiful. The ocean's gorgeous. The beaches are amazing. The people are warm and friendly and welcoming and their culture is fascinating. It's inexpensive um, once you get there. Um, gosh, the waves are just amazing and, and so powerful that it's unlike any other place I've ever surfed. So that's probably my favorite. That's the one that's had the biggest effect on me. Okay. So one of your books is Chasing Waves. Do you want to tell us about that, about what that experience was like getting to go to all those, you know, fantastic destinations and, and write about your experiences? So Chasing Waves uh, was, I learned to surf later in life. My husband grew up surfing in Southern California. So when I met him, he was already a surfer. And we were just uh, kind of backpacking and doing outdoorsy stuff together, but we weren't surfing because I didn't know how. And so when I learned to surf, I was like 30 or 29, um, which is old for <laughs> learning to surf. Most people who are really good, you know, learn to surf when they're kids. And so I learned to surf later in life. And I feel like as an adult, when I learned, I just was maybe cap more capable of really feeling all the different parts of it. And it just really affected everything about the way I experienced the outdoors it sort of awakened uh, a um, maybe a sensitivity or a, my observation skills just became peaked. And so uh, writing Chasing Waves was about kind of my experience as learning to surf as an older person um, and traveling and really wanted to get good at surfing, but having it be so hard because as an adult, it's just harder when you learn a sport, especially a high adrenaline sport like surfing that requires, you know, a lot of physical activity. So I really struggled in the beginning because I wanted to be a better surfer, but I just, I didn't, I didn't know how. And we live in a place where there's not great surf. We live in Washington state where it's very cold and, and the winters are very stormy and windy. And so not like living on the beach in Southern California where you can just, you know, walk down to the beach and surf just about every day of the year. So the story is about how I kind of came to the, the realization that I was going to have to really work hard to become a good surfer. And I really wanted to travel. So we took a couple of years kind of away from work and um, just traveled a bunch. And I just, I kind of surfed my brains out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and along the way, there's a, plenty of misadventures and, you know, lost bikinis and, um, <laughs> you know, uh, just really amazing things that happened to us. So that's the, the story of Chasing Waves. Gotcha. So your next book is a novel and in it, it's a story of mother and daughter and, their reconciliation. So do you want to tell us about that, um, going over the falls and why you wrote it and kind of a, um, a nice summary of what the story's about? So going over the falls is, is exactly that. It's, it's a mother daughter reconciliation story kind of told through a surfing angle. So it, it describes a lot of, um, the relationship between two surfers, mother and daughter, and they've been estranged for many years, but surfing is kind of their only bond. So, in order for them to find a way to be together again before the mom, mom passes away is to is through surfing, but it's not as easy as either of them thinks. So it's a it's a challenge mm -hmm. um, that they both have to overcome. Yeah, and I think I read somewhere, um, possibly in the book detail page, that you did you start the book after you became a mother yourself? Is that right? It had something to yes. do with your daughter. I remember that. Yes, that was sort of the seed that started the story um, because I realized that, you know, I, we, I made the transition pretty easily to become a mother. Um, and, but I thought, what if some uh, mom didn't? What if surfing was so important to her that she couldn't make that transition and surfing was still more important? And how would that affect the upbringing of her child? And so I wrote the perspective from that child that had a mother that was so obsessed with whatever it might be. There's, you know, people are obsessed with all kinds of stuff. If she was a surfer um, and put that first, what would that be like um, to grow up like that? Um, and so that was the seed that started the story. And then I use a lot of my travels um, to kind of fuel in, fuel all the, the pieces that became the background for the story. Gotcha. So, yeah. so how old is your daughter now? She's nine. Nine. Does she surf yeah. too? She does. Yeah. And I have a six-year-old daughter too. Oh, um, I didn't Lauren. know that. That's great. Yep. I have two. And so, yeah, we do, we do surf a lot. In the summertime, we go to the Washington and Oregon coast and do lots of camping trips. 
where we surf and camp and uh, they love it. I mean, they're not, you know, ripping by any standards. You know, we only surf maybe four or five times a year with them and the water's cold. And Mm. so, um, you know, we have wetsuits and they just love being near the beach and love playing in the water. And my youngest likes to boogie board and my oldest is probably going to start surfing on her own this summer, I think. Um, She's very brave, very adventurous um, and also a great swimmer. So, she really wants to do it. So we'll see. I, w- I want them to be, to do it for fun. I don't want it to be my thing. So, gotcha. so yeah. I've, I've been surfing on the Oregon coast. Do you have a favorite location in Oregon that you like to go? Uh, my favorite spot is near Manzanita, okay. um, which is kind of south of Cannon Beach. And there's a great spot there called Oswald West State Park. It's also known as Short Sands. And it's, uh, I don't know, long, not long, but it's like a 10 minute walk down from the highway. So you kind of have to load up for the day with all your stuff and carry it down there. But it's a beautiful beach. It's sheltered by the winds and it's um, got waves, I think, all year round. So it's a good spot. We love it down there. Great. I just wrote that down. So I will do my research to find out. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. It's always nice to know. (laughs) So yes, I am. I'm constantly doing Intel when I meet surfers like, Oh, where's your favorite spot? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Tell me about it. Exactly. So are Mm -hmm. you finding in the surfing world that people are generally kind and, and generous with their time? I've heard, I've heard that, you know, sometimes surfers have their, territory so to speak you know and so you don't kind of want to get in their space because that's their space yeah. are you finding that mm-hmm. or do you do you find that they're usually fairly generous and open with <laughs> people like <laughs> my husband and I who just kind of wander <laughs> into their space <laughs> uh there are certainly some places that are localized like there's a place called Seaside Point that's just north of um, Cannon Beach that is very localized and you wouldn't want to surf there unless you are married to someone who normally surfs there or you, you know, own the beach in front of it. Um, but places like Oswald West or and when we travel, mo- most people aren't, they don't live there. So they don't really have a claim that they can be a local and they can, you know, get in your face about, you know, this is my spot. I think that's fading. You know, the, there certainly are still places that are like that, but I feel like when I travel, people are open and friendly and, you know, everyone's coming from somewhere else. And so sure, maybe you've surfed this place for 20 years, but you know, we're all visiting and we all want to have a nice time. Um, and so it sort of depends. I think it also helps that I'm a girl, you know, people are just less threatened by me. So, you know, I show up at a break and people are, you know, generally don't, don't give me a hard time. Um, if I was to do something stupid, like drop in on them or, you know, get aggressive or something, then sure. They probably would say something, but um, most of the time when we, when we surf, especially with kids, I mean, no one is really going to give a kid a hard time, um, especially just learning to surf. As long as they're being safe and respectful, then, um, there's lots of, lots of ways for everybody. So what do you think about being a woman in surfing? You know, you, you mentioned that usually people are just, you know, kinder in general, but, um, how do you, how do you feel about women in the sport and, um, their reception? Is it, is it good? Is it um, welcoming? Like, what do you what do you think about it, just in general? Um, at first, when I first started to surf, there was so there was not very many women in the water, especially um, when we would travel. I would sometimes be the only girl in the group. Um, in Costa Rica, a couple of times we would be in a group of guys, and I'd be the only girl. And they all kind of thought it was cool, you know. I think at that time it was still kind of a novelty that, oh wow, there's a chick with us, cool. <laughs> right. um, now and she can do I stuff. Like I know, and she can actually catch waves. That's awesome. <laughs> um, there's some places that in the world that I guess are a little behind the times. Like I guess Australia. I think it's coming around, but there's a fairly chauvinistic society for a long time, so women weren't as welcome in the waves. But I feel like as a as a woman um, that it's. I've had great reviews from people who are so excited to have more, you know, women in the water. And it's great to have, um, my daughters to be able to surf. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think, I think so far, I mean, I haven't had really any negative, um, things happen to me just cause I'm the girl. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. It's always nice to have new, uh, new women coming into a sport, you know, 
um, I kind of experienced the same thing with rock climbing. You know, it's, it's such a male dominated sport. And then the women that did come in, they were just like, oh my gosh, she's awesome. And she can do things. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, it's always, it's always so much fun to, to get to see that, um, happen in a sport. So, um, yeah. you, uh, you are, are or were an acquisitions editor. Is that true? Yeah. So I work with, uh, what's called a book packager. And a book packager is kind of a, a company you've never heard of, but you've probably experienced their books all over. Do you remember Sweet Valley High? Yes. <laughs> those books. Of so course. Those books were all done by a, a book packager where the publisher says, okay, we want to have 100 books on, you know, this teen series happening in this high school. And then they would hire a company called a book packager to find the writers, do the editing, do the graphics, all the layout, everything, and then package the book all up and then give it back to the publisher. They would print it and do all the distribution. So I work for, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's kind of all behind the scenes, which is only, which isn't as much fun as like working for some big publisher with a big name, but um, it's really fun because I get to help, um, bring in authors and I get to work with authors one-on-one -on -one when they're writing their uh, first and second drafts. So we work with um, a company that makes young adult fiction, a publisher called Epic, and they uh, write series for teens. So yeah, I get to help kind of shape those first couple drafts and um, guide the authors often they're kind of inexperienced or just starting out authors. So it's really fun for me because I kind of feel like I'm teaching them things and I'm helping guide the story. And I can see the big picture sometimes, which is really helpful for the writers so that they can, it just help, kind of helps guide their path. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun. And then I also do editing for them as well. That's great. Yeah, so, just copy editing and things. Yeah, so your, your experience with being an editor and um, assisting authors along the way must have really done, I mean, you must have had a good transition for yourself moving from nonfiction to fiction. Am I correct? Did that kind of help yeah. inform that? Yes. I mean, I, I'd always wanted to write fiction. Um, and I actually wrote Going Over the Falls as my first book. Um, but I just, it was just, it wasn't quite ready and it was hard to sell fiction. So someone said, Hey, why don't you just write a nonfiction story instead? And I thought, cool, that sounds fun. Cause I'd been writing articles and things about surfing and traveling. And so it's kind of a natural fit, a natural progression. And so I put the fiction on the back burner and then as an editor, yeah, it, I mean, it really teaches you about what's, what sells and what kinds of stories sell and uh, how stories need to be constructed so that they're marketable. So yeah, it totally helped. Um, That's great. Yeah, it really kind of streamlined the book to a, a story that I felt like it had just enough in there, but not too much. I was definitely trying to write way too much in that book. There was like four different subplots and, you know, two main themes. And it was just too big of a, of a too heavy of a story. So the editing really helped me pare it down, I think. Okay, so what is your next big thing? Writing or in publishing? I don't know. Which way do you want to go with it? <laughs> well, gosh. So my next, I mean, my one of my next projects is to try, I'm tr going to try a, a marketing technique where you write a book and make it free. Mm -hmm. And then you, that free book kind of becomes a way for people to find you. And then they send, then connect to the book that the books that you're, you know, trying to sell. So I'm thinking about doing that. I have a couple of novels that I haven't um, completed, but I could, and maybe I'd do that with one. It'd be kind of fun. I and mean, I love to write. So I'd much rather write a book than work on social media marketing all day. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're both important, but so I thought maybe I would do that. Um, I'm also writing a series of rescues books for kids and that's just about done. That'll be really fun. Um, something that's kind of different, but it come, goes on my experience of being in the outdoors. Yeah, that um, sounds interesting too. Yeah, they're both fun. So th those are probably the two big things on my on my horizon right now. Gotcha. Okay, last question. I've actually been to Paulsbo, Washington, and wow. yeah, that's I know, great. right? Isn't that fun? <laughs> my aunt and yes. uncle. Um, my uncle still lives on Bainbridge Island, and so it was just a little hop, skip, wow. and a jump up to yep. Paulsbo. So yeah. my last question is: Do you still have the ice cream shop that dips your cone in chocolate? <laughs> No, oh, no. Well, unless it's Mora. Mora has been there for only a few years and I don't know because we've never done that, but they might, I don't know. That's right on the corner there in downtown Paulsbo. <laughs> um, 
And it's kind of a fancy shop. So I don't know. I've never seen anyone have that, but I don't know. Could maybe, be. maybe. Yes, it <laughs> was, was a fond memory. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That sounds like a good one. My kids would love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Amy, you do have some, you do have a free gift for us today. It's on your website and it's um, a yep. book sample of going over the falls. And so I will put a link in the um, show notes for that so that people can find it really easily. And um, I think that's it for today. So thank you so much for um, talking with me about your books. It's been a bunch thank of fun. You. Thank you very much. It's been great. All right. Thank you.